Welcome to Skydice Academy. Today we are going to discuss Article 15 of the Indian Constitution. But before that, we will see the thread common running to all the articles under the right to equality head. So as you can see the table, right to equality, which is guaranteed by the Indian Constitution, has five articles in it, Article 14 to 18. We have already discussed Article 14. Today, we are going to discuss Article 15. Article 14 deals with equality before law and equal protections of law, whereas Article 15 is a facet of Article 14 and it deals with prohibition of discrimination on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, and place of birth. So there are basically five grounds on which the prohibition of uh, uh, discrimination is guaranteed by the Indian Constitution. So if anyone is discriminated on on the basis of only these grounds, then it is a punishable offense under various statutes. And the aggrieved party can obviously move to the Supreme Court for the enforcement of their fundamental rights. Now, before we move further, let's see to whom the fundamental rights are available. Certain fundamental rights are available to citizens, whereas certain are available to both citizens and non citizens. So there is this difference. So rights available only to the citizens are Article 15, 16, 19, 29, and 30. And those available to both citizens and foreigners are these articles. So once you remember the fundamental rights available to the citizens, then it's easy to remember that the rest of the article fundamental rights are available to both. That way you can remember and differentiate easily. It can be important from the prelims point of view. So do remember them thoroughly. So let's come down to Article 15, prohibition of discrimination on specific grounds. So there are five grounds. The state shall not discriminate against any citizens only on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth, or any of them. So uh, next law says any citizen should not be discriminated on these grounds uh, with regard to access to shops, public restaurants, hotels, places of public entertainment, and use of wells, tanks, bathing carts, roads, and public places, which are wholly or partly uh, maintained out of the state's fund. However, nothing uh, now, so at clause one and clause two are the general clauses, and clause three is the exception to clause one and so nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any special provisions for women and children. So on the basis of gender, it first uh, says that discrimination is prohibited on the basis of sex. But later, there is an exception that uh, if the state feels that there is a need, then it can make special provisions for women and children. We will see this further. And clause four says that uh, Nothing in this article or article or clause two of article 29, which deals with the religious institutions, shall prevent the state from making any special provision for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward sections of citizens or for scheduled caste or scheduled tribes. Further, nothing uh, shall prevent the state from making any special provisions for the advancement of socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in regards to the educational institutions. So these were added through various amendments. Let's see them further. First, a brief overview. Article 15, clause one, specifically bars state from discrimination against any citizen on certain grounds. So these are five grounds. Do remember them thoroughly. It's very important from prelims as well as means from perspective and also for your proper understanding. Once you have them on your tips, it will be very easy to you know, see through the cases and you could easily connect with the news articles because you will know it, what they're actually talking about. So as I told earlier, article uh, 15, clause three and four are the exceptions to clause one and two, whereas uh, clause five incorporates provision for the admission to educational institutions. Now, these articles, the provisions containing Article 15 and 16 are just enabling provisions. They cannot be claimed as a matter of right and therefore no writ of mandamus can be issued. It was held in this case, AP 
Public Service Commission versus Balaji. It's not important to remember cases if you remember the content and you can write in your papers in one of the cases, the Supreme Court held this and that. And your, so it's totally irrelevant, but it is for your better understanding. Now let's compare the articles with Article 14 for better crystal clear understanding. Article 14 embraces within its sphere general principles of equality equality before law and equal protection of law. Whereas Article 15 is an example of specific application of the doctrine because it just uh, specifies the five grounds on which discrimination is prohibited. And Article 16 deals with the public employment. So here are the concentric circles. The main circle is Article 14, under it is Article 15, and under it is Article 16. Interesting, right? So the difference is Article 14 is general in nature and it applies to both citations and non-citations. Article 15 is specific and it applies to citations. Article 16 also applies to citations only. Further, what are the essential ingredients of Article 15 1? So prohibition is on the state not to discriminate. It is not applied to the private individuals. They can discriminate, they can do whatever they want in their you know, companies and at their homes. So main prohibition here is on the state not to discriminate. The right is granted only to the citations as we have studied. Article 15 and 16 applies to citations only and not to non-citations. Do remember this, it's a very fine difference, but it's very, very important. Further, the right is granted against discrimination on the basis of only religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth, or any of them five crowns. Discrimination is prohibited on those five crowns. If there is discrimination on some other ground, then it is allowed. So when we think of discrimination, we think of unfavorable bias. So that is why, you know, discrimination is prohibited on solely on these grounds. Now let us see the case laws under each of these heads one by one. So there should be no discrimination solely on the basis of religion. One of the important cases is Nansukdas versus state of UP. So here the law you know, provided for the election to the local bodies based on separate electorates for members of different religious communities. It was held to be void because uh, se separate electorates only on the basis of religion is a classification which is prohibited by Indian constitution. Religion has been a tricky issue because it is linked with customs and emotions. So earlier personal laws were very much immune towards being challenged at violative of fundamental rights. However, this has, you know, recent time there has been a shift in the perspective of courts and now the courts are upholding the fundamental rights and declaring personal laws violative of fundamental rights. For example, Triple Tala case, Sabri Mala case. So now personal laws aren't really immune and they will have to satisfy the test of constitutionality. Now race. So a Saurashtra law which restricted movement of certain communities was held to be ultravers of Article 15. Supreme Court has dealt with the issue of reservation of seats on basis of caste in several instances. So all these cases are relating to the educational institutions mainly on the reservation of seats in the educational institutions. So in uh, this is a very famous case, MR Balaji versus State of Mysore. Do try to remember this case. In this case, State of Mysore has issued an order that all the communities except Brahmins fell within the definition of SCBCs, SCs and SDs and 75% seats were reserved for them. Further, the backward classes were divided into two more categories, backward classes and more backward classes. So this classification was challenged and the Apex co uh, Code squashed the order as it categorized the backward classes solely on the basis of caste. So there is an, another case for the um, discrimination on the basis of caste. So your, the, there was remission was granted to the convicted prisoners belonging to SC and SDs only. So there was no measure for advancement and was, order was squashed by the court. Now, discrimination on the basis of sex. 
SOCEDO is Convention on Elimination of Discrimination in All Forms Against Women. This is an international convention. India is a signatory to this convention and it is regarded as the Bill of Rights for Women. Do read about SOCEDO. It is asked in prelims often and it keeps on coming in news. It is a very important international convention. We will discuss more about it in our international law sessions. So apart from the right to work, which uh, uh, is undividable part of the human existence, right to the same employment opportunity, same criteria in the matters of employment, and there should be no discrimination against women. So all this has to be ensured. So the landmark case here was Vishakha versus state of Rajasthan. So in this case, you know, the Supreme Court had laid down the guidelines to prevent sexual harassment at workplace. And there was actually absence of legislation. There was no law regulating sexual harassment at workplace. So Supreme Court in this landmark judgment gave certain guidelines which should be followed till the act was enacted. And in 2013, the Sexual Harassment at Workplace Act was enacted, which now regulates the whole crime under the act. Next is restitution of conjugal rights. Now, this is from the family laws. Section 9 of the Hindu Marriage Act provides for the restitution of conjugal rights. It has a long history. It has been upheld. It has been struck down, then upheld again. So let's see what it is. It is a very interesting right. Just like uh, there is this burning issue of marital rape, whether to criminalize it or decriminalize it, the debate is still going on. So restitution of conjugal rights is when either the husband or the wife without any reasonable excuse withdraws from the society of other, the aggrieved party may apply by the petition to the district court for the restitution of conjugal rights. And if the court is satisfied, then it can issue the decree of restitution of conjugal rights. So suppose uh, there is a couple and if the wife is not happy with the husband and she leaves the house, now the husband has the right to go to the district court and apply for the restriction of conjugal rights. And if the decree is issued, the wife has to come back at the husband's home and live for a certain duration if they are not heading for divorce. This uh, right has been given to protect the institution of marriage. That was the legislative intent behind this section under the Hindu Marriage Act. So here the famous case was T. Saritha. Uh, so she was a famous uh, South Indian actress and Andhra Pradesh High Court had declared Section 9 as invalid on the ground of being biased towards men. So here the important element is sexual cohabitation is inseparable ingredient of the decree of restitution of conjugal rights. So court held it to force one person to have sex with someone who is unwilling. Um, so it offends their body and mind and therefore the section is invalid. However, in the other case, the Delhi High Court had upheld section nine, uh, stating that it's very important to maintain the institution of marriage. And it's not just about the sexual intercourse, but it is also about the cohabitation. Later, the Apex Supreme Court, these were the High Court judgments. So now what Supreme Court says, in Saroj Rani, the Supreme Court agreed with the High Court of Delhi and held the section to be valid. It was of opinion that it serves a social purpose to prevent the breakup in, of marriage. However, in, like in today's era, in 2016, the Delhi High Court has held that the object of degree of restitution of conjugal rights is about cohabitation. So they can live at a, a common house in harmony. However, the decree, if it is issued, it, it can you know, permit cohabitation, but it doesn't and cannot enforce sexual intercourse. Because there is another debate also going on whether to criminalize marital rape. So there is an you know, exception under article uh, under section 375, which deals with rape. So there is an exception that when a husband has a sex with his wife, then it is not a rape, even if she doesn't have a concern. So right now the debate is whether to, you know, struck it down. So here also, if the decree is even issued, a woman should not and cannot be forced to have sexual intercourse with her husband. So here is what the Delhi High Court has said. Still, the section is valid. Restitution of conjugal rights under Section 9 of Hindu Marriage Act is still valid as of now. 
In 2019, the PIL has been filed in the Supreme Court challenging its validity, stating that it is anti-woman as it forces the woman to go back to her husband against her wishes and in violation of her rights. So it is patriarchal and regards women as a chattel or personal possession of husband. So on this ground only, you know, the article 497 of Indian Penal Code. Do you remember which article, uh, section it was, what it dealt with? Yes, the crime of adultery. So under section 497 of Indian Penal Code, the crime of adultery was valid. However, in 2018, the Supreme Court struck down because it treated women as the property of husband. So here also, the argument is that, that uh, this decree of restitution of conjugal rights treats women as a personal possession of her husband and is violative of Article 15.1. The case has been listed for hearing and still no judgment has been given. So when the judgment is given, let's see, it gets struck down soon. It's the need of the hour. Now let's move on to the other case, LGBT community. So here the landmark cases, National Legal Services Authority versus Union of India, the expression sex is not limited to biological sex of men, male and female, and it covers transgenders also. And they are included in SCBCs for the admission to educational institutions and public employment. Another landmark case is of Naujit Singh Johar, and it has been discussed in the previous modules. So place of birth. So no person can be discriminated on their places of birth. Here is the landmark case you can read. However, if a medical college differentiates between the person on the basis of residence, then it is, has been allowed because the education is a state subject. A state spends funds to, for the upkeep of educational institutions. Thus, justification for classification of residents uh, is given because the residents of the state, after becoming doctors, you know, they would settle down in the state and serve the society. So here, the discrimination on the basis of residence for the educational institutions have been allowed by the Supreme Court. Article 15.2 is applicable. So here it was, they shouldn't be discriminated in the public places and the guards and wells. We have just read it earlier. So it is applies to only public places and has no application in the private properties. Article 15.3 is an exception and the state can make provisions for women and children. Why uh, is this a differentiation? Because women have been socially and economically handicapped for centuries. And they are not fully represented in our social economic activities of the nation on an equal footing. Even today, the, in the uh, strength of judges of the Supreme Court, women is not quite well represented. So to eliminate this handicap and strengthen and improve the status of women, this discrimination is allowed. So some of the cases are in, in a school primary school reservation of 50% for girls under the age of 10 were allowed because uh, they were taught by the women and therefore the female candidates was preferred. In another case, so in the bail, you know, in some offenses, there is a, a provision that uh, women and ch child, they can be released. In many cases, they have a different bail provisions and that the, the discrimination is held to be valid by the court. The state can provide for the reservation of women to improve women's participation in various activities. Preference of appointment of a lady principal in women's college, it does not violate Article 14, 15 and 16. <clears throat> now under Article 15, clause 4, the state can make special provisions for the advancement of SCBCs of the citizens of, or, you know, for SCs and STs. So, court appreciated that various types of affirmative actions can be taken who has been historically oppressed and things were different for them. So, we all know that uh, SCs, STs and social and economically backward classes have suffered a lot. And that's why these reservations are made, so to bring them on an equal footing. Uh, there was a Madras government order 
allotting seats in the state medical colleges on the basis of community it was declared invalid because it was all merely on the basis of caste and religion so in mr balaji it was in the ad admission to the educational institutions uh, their court answer there was an important question whether a particular caste can be sole criteria for determining backwardness of a class court answered in negative and laid down the following sub classification of backward classes into backward and more backward is not given and it is invalid caste cannot be the sole criterion backwardness must be both social and educational and it is enabling provisions and poverty occupations place of habitations may contribute to the backwardness and cannot be ignored so these were some of the key takeaways from that judgment The Apex Court has clarified that no class of citizens can perpetually be treated as social and economically backward. Backwardness cannot continue indefinitely. So, once a chance is given to a particular community to improve, uh, the state must review the situation from time to time. And if the situation is improved, they must be removed from the backward category so that others are given equal chance, and soon everyone in the country is on equal footing. so article 155 is regarding the admission to the educational institutions and it was added to 93rd constitutional amendment act 2005 some of the case laws are uh, state cannot regulate the admission policy of unaided educational institutions but they can specify the academic qualifications for the students and also state the academic standards state can fix the quota for admission to educational institutions but cannot fix fees in another case the court held that education is a national wealth essential for national na nation's progress and prosperity so to give effect to article 155 the center has enacted the central educational institutions act 2006 providing quota of 27% for candidates belonging to obcs in all the higher educational institutions including iits and iims Uh, Supreme Court also upheld the amendment to the Act, but directed central government to exclude creamy layer. Now, creamy layer is that section of the society which has improved their situation, and therefore the benefits uh, given to the SC and STs and OBCs are not given to them because they are advanced sections now. However, in post-graduation courses, the admission can be on the solely on the basis of merit. so there cannot be any circumstances where the rule of merit can be compromised so it is an exception to article 191g article 191g guarantees the right to practice any profession or carry out any trade occupation or business however for that any educational qualification is required the grant of reservation reduces the chances of getting admission for obtaining qualification so that's why article 155 excludes the operation of article 191g it also excludes the minority educational institutions as they are separate class in themselves and their rights are protected under other educational provisions so these were just some of the ancillary provisions not much important so mainly you know you just have to remember the five grounds on which the discrimination is prohibited and the some of the case laws under each ground and also why the discrimination is later allowed by clause 3 for the women and children and uh, lastly you know the important case laws and the quota system under the education institutes so these are the more uh, more or less a whole article is covered under these and questions can be asked from this depending on the, what is in the current affairs and mostly what is trending in the current affairs that is likely to be asked so if you have any doubts and queries you can write us in the comment section don't forget to like the video and share the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you so much